7.52 a.m. Montreal time, so I've been awake for about 24 straight hours. I'm dead. <sighs> Alright, so today is Friday the 9th of June here in Montreal, and I'm about to hop on a flight to Australia for my graduation. So my graduation's on the 20th of June, but I extended my trip forward so I could catch the Vivid Festival, which I'm actually genuinely excited about. So yeah, it's about an hour before I'm supposed to leave. I haven't packed yet but it should be okay. So this is gonna be a pretty fast flight, only 24 hours, which is actually quite fast. I only had three hours in LAX, so it's Montreal, LAX, Sydney, and I'm only a three hour layover at LAX. So yeah, it's, yeah, I got it. I have to stop packing. I really didn't need to pack much. My carry-on took much longer to pack. Oh, that's in, that's in pounds. Okay. from the future. I'm currently at a cottage in the middle of the Quebec countryside and I was halfway through editing this video when I realized that I didn't actually explain my little experiment or the title of this vlog on camera. So I'm just gonna cut in here and give a bit of context. The flight from Montreal to Sydney crosses nine different time zones and is at its fastest a 21 to 24 hour flight. Sometimes it can go up to 29 hours. The thing is you have a lot of time to mess around with which gives you an opportunity to try and eliminate any jet lag. All you have to do is only sleep when your arrival destination is sleeping. On this 24 hour flight that basically means I have to stay awake for the first 16 hours of my transit and then sleep for the last eight. Okay, it's 6 a 18 a.m. in Sydney right now. So probably give it about say 15 hours. 15 hours should make it about 9.18 p.m. So then I can, so I should sleep at 9, about 9.30 p.m. Sydney time. 15 hours. All right, okay Google, set an alarm for 15 hours. Okay, 7.18 a.m., setting your alarm. Mother. Because I was leaving at 4.37 p.m. in the afternoon, that basically meant I had to stay awake for 24 straight hours before falling asleep midway through my final leg from LA to Sydney. It's a little bit of suffering now, well, okay. A lot of suffering now, so you can hit the ground running on arrival. All right, so back to the vlog. La qualité de l'air est importante pour nous. C'est pourquoi nous allons à vous offrir un environnement sans fumée. my flight but all of these go to places in North America while I'm trying to get to Australia also I didn't have to get my my bag so I'm super confused I think I figured out that I was dropped off in the domestic part of the terminal I need to grab my bags put them onto the next carousel go all the way to the international departures which I think is named Tom Bradley and then I can find my flight LA I hate LAX just talked to one of the airport workers here and apparently I just have to, I don't have to grab my bags, which is odd considering it's the US and that's what you always have to do. Instead of going out of the airport and then back in and having to go through security again, I can take this tunnel right here and then catch a bus and then skip the security and like get, get straight in. So I'm gonna do that. There we go. I've never used this shortcut before. I think this is new, so that's pretty handy. A. I'm coming. I'm coming. Soon. 
Soon, soon, soon. Yeah, so I think this is new, which is pretty, pretty cool. Nice work, LAX. You're getting better. Slightly better. Where do I go? I'm gonna go through there. Where the hell am I? So I followed that lady's advice, and now I've never been more confused in an airport in my entire life. So it doesn't look like my flight exists. Yeah, I don't really know where I am supposed to be because I can't really find the flight on the screen, which is an issue. Should be fine, but I have less than two hours. Alright, so I just checked on Google and apparently my flight is at 10.35pm from gate 72A, which was where I was before, but they didn't have any international flights. I have no clue. So now I'm on the way back to where I started, after following everyone's directions and showing my tickets. LAX, you're the worst. I didn't know you could make LAX worse, but you succeeded. Never again. Honestly, I'd rather go to Tokyo. I just saw a sign saying Terminal 7 United Connecting Flights. So I think I'm on the right track. That's definitely a good sign. Okay. Found it. Uh, rain showers moving throughout the city throughout the day. And uh, winds will be out of the south at about 10 to 15 miles an hour. bus ride. I am back in Sydney, back in Randwick where I used to used to live around here. I'm not really that excited to be here in Sydney, like I'm only here for my graduation technically, but I am here for Vivid though, which is what is on right now. So I'm, I am super excited for that. Update on the jet lag situation. I feel okay. I didn't really get too much sleep on the plane when I intended because to survive the last hour awake as I planned I had to down a whole cup of really terrible coffee from United Airlines so I got work done during that no so that kept me awake during that and then I couldn't get to sleep but I feel okay I think I can last a day I don't feel too jet lagged I'm just a little bit tired also one thing I noticed I, I instinctively look the wrong way when trying to cross the road. I always look towards the right. I look towards my... I look towards my... Wait, which way did I used to look? I always look towards my left because I'm used to that from Montreal, but now everything's coming from the right because everyone drives on the left side of the road here. Also, the, the buttons to cross the road, those actually do something here. So I actually have to remember to press them instead of just waiting at the road. So, things to get used to over my 12-day trip here, so yeah. 
Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think down below. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already, which let's be honest, most of you probably are. I make videos about travel, my experience moving to Montreal, Canada, photography and vlogs. So I will see you in the next one. I know this one was late because this is October and it was shot in June. I think it's just that when your day in day out job is sitting in front of a laptop on Premiere Pro video editing, it's hard to take any free time you have left and also spend that video editing. But now I think I've gotten the hang of it. I've gotten super efficient and found the balance, so I will see you all soon, I promise. Goodbye. Okay,